Hello everyone and welcome to the Behind Enemy Lines video YouTube channel. Uh, I'm back, it's uh, Dan here. I've been uh, a bit busy lately moving house. Uh, that's why you haven't seen a video from me. What we're going to look at today though is um, Battlefront's new paint sets. We'll go first through the Quartermaster paint set and then I'm going to show you how well and how different the coverage is with the uh, USA paint set. And we'll do a little test to see if it can uh, can airbrush, go through an airbrush. So, first things first, I want to look at the Quartermaster's paint set. So, Quartermaster's paint set is the paint set you'll use for all your bits and pieces, rifles, webbings, those kind of things. Um, on the back, what you've got in here is, start with black, army green, wool brown, European skin, which is going to be handy. Dark gun metal, which is your gun metal grey. Bum, uh, bum metal? <laughs> Battlefield brown. Uh, worn canvas. Military khaki. Dry dust. And a, and a skin shade. So these used in conjunction with, say, this, should give you all the colours to paint a basic US infantryman. We're going to open them up because these bottles have changed. So you're probably used to the standard Vallejo bottles, which look like this, you know. But these ones are slightly different. Battlefront uh, nerded out, as it were, because they could. And that's what I remember asking uh, one of the employees. It's like, why did you do the new shape bottles? And they said, because we wanted to. And I thought, fair enough. All right. So well, they come like this, and they look like little bullets. So there you have it. Uh, bronze uh, brass tip and the important question is if you've got paint holders that are specific to holding Vallejo uh, paint holders will they fit that I'm just gonna try yes they do uh, these ones are smaller 12 mil I'll just double check the size of a normal one yeah standard Vallejo is 17 mil whereas these ones are 12 mil uh, however, your black, your main colors, are 20 mil. So, colors you're going to use a lot, like Battlefield Brown, black, everything else is uh, the smaller size of it. So, got a skin shade here, we'll test out how that goes later on. And all the other colors. So, nifty little packaging. Um, not sure if you're keen. A lot of folks didn't like the looks of bullets, but that was that's that's, that's up to the individual. It's a it's a paint bottle. Hold my paint. That's all that matters. The colours are clearly listed on them, so Battlefront have been able to manage that and make their own range, which is cool. So in conjunction with their in-house painter James Brown, they've um, come up with these colours, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll check out the US paint set next. Now, the US paint set. Rawr. Oh, unboxing. Rawr. Plastic everywhere. So, in this one, we've got dark leather, Bradley shade, Sisley yellow, uh, Sherman drab, which is, I guess, going to be the old olive drab, and a uh, GI green. And so, you've got one Bradley shade. Each um, shade is named after a general by the looks of things. The German one's got Rommel, the Rommel shade or Manstein shade, some shade. So, once again, uh, you get one 20 mil bottle and four 17 mil, uh, no, 12 mil bottles of um, the colors here. Now, I'm not so much worried about running out of colors myself. It hardly ever happens for me um, on account of. Uh, I've still got a gunmetal gray, I just ran out of it. And it lasts me about five, six years. And I've done a lot of armies. So they, they will last a while. And um, Shimon Drab, you may use more of it. It depends if you're going to use it in the airbrush or not. But we'll try that bit out a bit later. All right. So first thing we're going to do in this next part is I'm actually going to paint uh, oh, a little US infantryman. We'll see how he works out. So I'll just stand by to stand by. We'll Okay, so uh, that's my chair, and oh, that's cold because it's made of metal. 
Uh, we're going to start by painting this guy. Uh, so this is US Infantryman, as I talked about before. We'll get him in focus. -ish. Stop moving. I got him balanced on three things, so uh, we'll see how it goes. First color I'm going to start off with, because it's US Infantryman. I'm going to go with wool brown for his. Uh, was it military khaki? Which one should I use? Uh, have a look. Mm, I'll go with wool brown. All right. Um, thing is, are these like Vallejo? Do they need lots of shaking? I'm giving it a big old shake, but didn't seem to have much room to get it shake on. We'll see how it comes out. It's got quite a big dropper. Oh yeah, it's pretty thick. Uh, so obviously water base, so it'll need a bit of uh, water on your brush. See how this looks. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a, quite a lot. A drip goes a long way. I see these lasting quite a long time. That's cool. All right, so this I'm just going to move some things because it is really hard for me to paint so far away from me. All right, so I want to get on his uniform. Ah, uh, this is a very thin paint when I've now thinned it down. Okay. That's alright. We'll get a second coat on that soon enough. My paintbrush is not agreeing with this at all. Needs more paint. We'll get less watered down part of it, see how it works out. I'll um speed through this shortly so you don't have to put up with watching paint dry. Well, you won't be watching a dry, you'll just be watching it go on. Okay. Well, no, no. Slight mistake there. I meant to use military khaki for the um, shirt. So I'm going to now do the wool brown I saved earlier. So I've gone over it with the military khaki, I should explain. And now I'm going to do the wool brown on the pantaloons. Not what they call it, they're called pants, but um, it goes on really well. I'm kind of liking it. I've gone, I don't normally paint directly over black, but it's just showing you how it works. So it's kind of looking samey, samey, but sort of different. So you can still, I hope you guys can see it, the sort of brown difference between there and there. We'll just get this one done quickly. Don't want to bother you guys too much with this. So now I've finished using both the military khaki and the uh, wool brown on the pants. I've also done the uh, gator, gator, the, the thingies on the boots. I'm pretty sure they're called gators, so I don't know. But I'm also going to do the webbing. Uh, it says to use Tommy Green, but I'm going to try using GI Green on account of I don't have Tommy Green on me. So I'm shaking these, but I don't need to. Uh, that's, a, that's a big change. And I found that normally going over the same place uh, twice if you do a black undercoat it's going to be more than enough so you don't want your brush too wet with this either because it um it it spreads real thin so it might look kind of gumby right now kind of thick but we can change that so right now just the webbing that includes the rifle strap which i'll endeavor to get on the first try Ooh, this green one's kind of thin it's kind of a brighter green too, so maybe that Tommy Green is correct. I'll have to acquire some of that. Yeah, this is really light, like really green. Maybe maybe it can be a new rifle strip. Maybe it can be a green troop, new to the field. That's all right. Nothing a bit of light can't make lighter. It actually goes on, like I said, probably like three or four times very really well. Right, I'll go do the rest of the webbing and we'll come back 
once that's done and move on to the next step. Okay, now that that part is done, whoop, step back over. We have finished the green. I didn't use Tommy Green, I used, uh, what was it called? GI Green. I uh, finished all the webbing bits. We're going to now move on to Battlefield Brown, which is used for rifle wooding, uh, wooding, woody bits, rifles, and um, other assorted tools. Uh, this one comes in the bigger 20 mil bottle. Uh, I'm not too keen on this because it, from the bottle, it doesn't look like beige round, but then that's from the bottle. So we'll see how that goes as a replacement. We've got an ink wash to do after it, so we'll see how that goes. I was just, I was looking online for a guy to see, because I can't find my Colors of War book, which is strange. Because um, all my books are on a shelf, but I will, I will locate it, and um, I'm pretty sure this uh, Battlefield Brown now replaces Beige Brown. We'll see how it works out, though, because it's, um, you know, we've got an ink wash to do, so that changes things. Alright, so we'll just grab this little guy up. We'll start with his entrenching tool. Ah, oh, okay. Well, should just go with my gut instinct next time and just do it. That's actually not too different. That's actually pretty nifty. Okay, right on. It's a bit hard to see against the wool brown, but you can definitely see the difference between there and there. All right, I'll uh, do the rifle and we'll come back. I'm also going to do the skin in this color as well. The reason behind that is I always do a brown before I go over with like a European skin just to help with highlights and definition because going with a light skin shade straight over the top of black is, is it just creates more work for yourself. So I'll do that and we'll come back. So after we finish the browns, I also finished the brown on the shoes or boots. Uh, we're going to go over those with a color from the German range called Red Oxide because uh, it's a nice red leather. But for now, I'm just going to quickly do the uh, small parts of metal on the rifle there with uh, dark gun metal. Whoa, it's really dark. And really runny. Let's have a look. It is metallic. Oh yeah, there it is. So it's like a very dark, um, super dark German. Ah, oh, but it goes on uh, weird. Maybe it's my lighting. Looks dark in one place and lighter in another. All right, we'll do the last part, then we'll uh, come back and we'll do the flesh for you. And uh, now the skin tone. So this is from the. Quartermaster's pack, it's called European Skin. Just get a dot here, it's thick as well. Just using it so only really the bristles of your brush are damp. It doesn't need too much water, and because I've pre done everything in a brown, whoops, this should help me. I'll start over here and we'll work our way around. Oh, that's. It's kind of messy. It's hard to see, once again, because I can't get close enough to do this. Right, so I'll do the flesh and we'll come back and we'll hopefully it'll look okay. Okay, so I found another colour for the shoes. Instead of using red oxide, I used dark leather, uh, which is part of the uh, US paint set. Yeah, it is. So it's part of the US paint set. So I use that instead of oxide red. Last color is uh, one of the big drop bottles, which is Shimmer Drab. I use that obviously for the helmet. And once we've done that, we're going to come through with a couple of ink washes, or shades as they're called. So let's try the screen on for size. Oh, the helmet's got a bit of a miscast in it, but it's my fault for not noticing. Once again, it goes on very uh, thinly, so it might need a couple of layers, but that's, once again, it's over black, so it's to be expected. We'll get this done and uh, I'll come back to it. All right, so we're back, the helmet is done. I've added a bit of wool brown to the uh, leather band across the top. I'm now going to do 
a couple of shades on them. I'm going to use Bradley shade for the uniform. And uh, from the Quartermasters pack, uh, some skin shade. So we'll start with the all over the American uh, with the Bradley shade. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, this is a thick shade. I'm going to mix this with water, which I think was the instruction. Because I do not want... Oh, no. Okay. That is... I do not want a shade that's too thick, so give me another drop of water. Okay. So it's a deep brown muck of a shade, so let's put it on kind of brown and all over the show. Alright, what I'll do is we'll cover the thing in shade, uh, both Bradley shade and the uh, fleece shade or skin shade. We'll come back when it's done and uh, We'll tidy up any parts that need tidying. Stay tuned for the completed result. Okay, so we're back. The ink has dried, and oh, sorry, the shades have dried, and I've gone over the miniature itself with the colors again. Uh, I have forgotten to do the metal colors though, so we will just quickly do that. Now you hate that, and you think, oh yeah, totally done. And then, no, you're not. So we'll just see if we can't get that to work. You get to see me do a paint the same thing again. I won't show it to you because you don't want to be bored. But those shades have come up quite a treat on these. Right. So now it's truly done. It just needs a matte varnish. So, there he is. Hope he looks alright for you. We'll turn him around. Show the back. Uh, so this is just a very quick basic paint job. And, you know, it's done. 